In this week's episode of Healthy Life Path TV, we discuss pricing options between organic food and fast food and why organic food is much better for you in terms of pricing. We also visit Andrew Scenic Acres around the month of October to see what's available for outdoors and for families and for fun. And also we discuss about the 10 rules of marriage and how you can apply that to your relationships. And last but not least, Shirelle will be introducing the Roger Barnett invite that's happening at the Toronto International Center on October 23rd so that way you can join us there. This and much more on Healthy Life Path TV. Enjoy. great alternative to junk food like your normal or usual hamburgers and fries and cola is to try going for organic food. Now we all know that organic food is kind of pricey. You can get bananas for almost three bucks uh, as opposed to the conventional bananas where you would get it for about a dollar or like 69 cents a pound. But the rule of thumb is that when you're eating junk food you're paying a lot of money, probably about six or seven bucks for a full combo. Instead of getting a full combo, why don't you get yourself some organic bananas and maybe some sesame crackers as well and what happens is that even if it's a little pricey you're actually getting a lot of good food for your for your body and it's about the same price but you're paying less so it's worth giving it try organic food does your body good as opposed to fast food which is detrimental to your health when shopping for fruits and vegetables take a look at the stickers on the produce these stickers are called price lookup codes Organic produce have five numbers, starting with a number nine. If it starts with a number eight, that is a genetically modified product, which you may want to avoid. Organic produce tastes sweeter and plump compared to its conventional counterparts. For bread and grains, take a look to see if it's whole wheat. If you are allergic, check for ingredients like kamut, which is allergy friendly. Nuts may be pricey, but they're healthier than a hamburger. And speaking of hamburgers, if you want to eat meat, consider free range and raised produce in a health food store. So give it a try. Just go with the organic food. You're going to be doing your body good and you won't have to worry about the inflammation that you would get in the future from eating junk food. That's your Healthy Life Path tip for a minute. I'm here at Carrot Common in Toronto buying some organic food and I'm going to enjoy it. So I hope you can enjoy it as well. Roger Burnett, who is the CEO of Shackley Corporation, will be coming to Toronto to speak at the International Centre in Mississauga together with his wife Sloan Burnett, who is an MSNBC broadcaster and journalist. Rodney and I will be speaking and presenting on business incentives to a large audience. There's free admission, free parking, and a free gift if you are attending. So if you are coming and if you would like more information, please click on the link below. We hope to see you there. As autumn rolls in, fewer outdoor tourist destinations become available. But one of the most special ways to enjoy the month of October is at farms like Andrew's Scenic Acres. These places let you pick your own pumpkins, sunflowers, raspberries, apples, plus you get to enjoy fresh, sweet, organic corn all cooked in a hot pot of water. You also get to meet with the local farm animals who take every opportunity to greet you with a smile. Then, there are hay rides that take you all around the land, giving you an opportunity to enjoy the scenery and take in fresh greenbelt air. There's so much more to enjoy during the autumn season, but the important thing is to reconnect with nature, as we all are made of nature. A few nights ago, I was just visiting with a client and just as we were about to leave their place, I noticed this little sign on the wall. It's actually a little scroll and it intrigued me because it has something about 10 rules for a happy marriage. And 
relationships are very important in this lifetime and actually it's important everywhere you go especially if you are doing work online or just communicating with people online but this one is all about marriage however this can also work with your friendships and if you're also in a relationship you may want to consider these as well uh, so here are 10 rules for a happy marriage and number one never both be angry at the same time never both be angry at the same time if you have two people angry what happens well think of it this way if you have two fires or two uh, lighted matches and you put them together what happens you get a much bigger fire so as much as possible try try not to be angry both of you or at least one of you try to step down a little bit number two never yell at each other unless the house is on fire it's a good point never yell at each other because yelling should be used to call for help or to call for an emergency it shouldn't be used as a weapon it shouldn't be used as a weapon uh, so never yell at each other unless your house is on fire or something's happening number three if one of you has to win an argument let it be your mate mm. men that's is important because women are nurturers and we are cultivators it's important that we try to learn this but it's also good for women to know this too very important Four, if you must criticize, do it lovingly. Criticism doesn't mean like you say something, for example, you know, you did a great job on that, but you really, really need to work on that talking of yours. It's too loud. It's too this or too that. Suddenly you're injecting a lot of negative comments. Remove all negative comments and try to be positive as much as possible. Do it lovingly. If anything, try to avoid criticizing as much as possible. Maybe make suggestions instead. For example, you know what? That was a good effort, and I see some or some sort of possibility with this. How about if we try it in this direction? I used to have a friend named Paul O'Malley years ago. He was a, he's a great singer to me uh, to this day. And whenever I worked with him, if he saw something that was a little bit unbalanced in my music, for example, because I used to be a songwriter, he would say, you know what, how about try this? Or how about try this? Or what do you think uh, this would sound like, for example? Those are good ways to avoid criticism and actually it actually takes people into a growing direction. When you criticize, it's almost like batting a person down in a way. But when you try to suggest things, you actually move forward. So if anything, do it lovingly or just don't criticize at all. Make suggestions and do it lovingly. Kiss each other in the forehead if you have to. Number five, br never bring up mistakes of the past. This is so important because we couples and everybody does this. Uh, we can't help but look at the past because we can't see the future and the present not everybody sees the present we have to learn how to see everything in the present there's a saying and I know it's very cliche but the past is the past the future hasn't happened yet the present is a, is a gift because it is the present number six neglect the whole world rather than each other and yes that's important because the world can abandon you eventually and when that happens who do you run to the, your very best friend, your lover. So that's important. Because the world goes up and down. You, you may think that the world's on your case, but most times they're not. However, being one person, it may seem like you have the worst day in the world. Just try to make sure that you don't neglect the person that's really most important to you in your life, which is your partner. Number seven, never go to sleep with an argument unsettled. Very important. Because if you leave a fire burning and you just leave it, it's going to continue burning. And by the next morning, everything's burned down and all you have left is that. Charred remains. Don't leave an argument unsettled. Number eight. At least once every day, say a kind or complimentary word to your life partner. Very important. And the reason for this is that you want to make sure that your relationship is growing. I remember a man by the name of uh, Blair Singer and he wrote a book called Sales Dogs and he wrote something called the emotional bank account maybe it was Blair Singer I'm not sure I can't remember don't quote me on that but there's something called an emotional bank account and the thing is when you want to get love you have to give it and the beautiful thing about uh, giving love is that everybody has it love is a decision just give love and keep giving love and keep you giving love because what's gonna happen is that when you give love to the others you're going to get love back a lot more and it's going to fill your emotional bank account or your love bank account. So that's important because when you can uh, give more complimentary words to your partner, they're going to give so much love back that if you have a really bad day, they're going to forgive you because they've gotten so much love from you. They know that's not you. 
that's just you just going through the emotions, but they know who the real you is. You are a love you are a loving person. So practice that. Keep giving love. And that means also try to get rid of criticism uh, criticism as much as possible. And number nine, when you have done something wrong, admit it and ask for forgiveness. We have to let go of the ego, especially us guys as well. I mean, there's nothing wrong with ego if it's going to push you forward, but you have to draw the line eventually. Ego is very, it's, it's not selfless at all. It's very selfish in a way, but you got to make sure you use ego as a tool and not as a personality trait. Eventually, if you use too much ego, you're going to push everybody away. And the beautiful thing about getting rid of ego, and if you admit that you're wrong and ask for forgiveness, people will lovingly give it to you because they like that. And it's important. Practice humility. Humility is very important. And we, we're missing that in this day of age. We need humility. And number 10, remember, remember, it takes two to make a quarrel. And it's so true. You can actually have one person just step out of the quarrel and suddenly it loses its power. Two people creating a quarrel gives it so much power, but one person just getting out of the quarrel, maybe it's taking a step back and just calming things down, the quarrel loses its power. Maybe the person may have to go to their bedroom and just slam the door, but at least be patient with them. Be patient. And then they come to their senses. If you continue doing the quarrel with the other person, that quarrel will stick. And you know, when you hammer something or you hammer a nail into a wood and hard, hammer it hard, when you pull it out, the nail, the nail's hole is so deep, it can't get anywhere. You can try to caulk it, but it's still there. It's still there. So as much as possible, step out of a quarrel if you are involved in one as well. So those are 10 rules for a happy marriage, but you can apply this to your life. You can apply this to your relationships. In a way, you can also somewhat reply, apply this to your business relationships as well, but just change the terminology. You don't want to fall in love with your uh, business partner <laughs> unless your business partner is your wife as well.